Are you ready? Are you ready for the news time? Yes, welcome to the Saturday News. My name is Phil Chambers and I am joined by Gareth Morgan. But let's get right into it because I've got a lot to go through in this story. So you will have 100% heard about all of the WWE stuff taking over their um, WWE talents, Twitch and like cameos and their social things like that. Well, we've got a lot of backstage updates and reports about how the talent feel about all of this. So I'm just going to kind of fly through it because I've got a lot of, lot of notes and a lot to get through. So Fightful Select um, have done a big rundown of the backstage reaction and they were basically saying that the reaction is a little bit all over the place depending on who you talk to and how much they actually use Twitch and Cameo and things like that. So ranged from one person saying that they aren't really too concerned about it at all because WWE sort of takes care of them financially and their schedule like hasn't allowed them to keep up with Cameo and things anyway so they're not too bothered about it but then it goes runs the gamut to a bunch of other people where several other wrestlers are saying that um, they don't actually think they're going to see any additional money from this at all uh, because many of the basic payoffs for shows have been sort of cannibalized uh, because wrestlers have much bigger, high, higher, much higher downside guarantees than they used to. Uh, some say that they don't really stream, but they're worried about how this will impact, impact other projects that they might want to get involved with, with like friends and family, and they aren't sure how that's going to affect them in the long run. Uh, a lot of the frustrations are coming because this is completely new and it wasn't in their original contracts at all and they're just kind of dumping this on them and bringing new contracts to them. Um, almost all of the talent apparently that they spoke to said that they won't even bother signing a new deal or opting in for the cameo thing if it's pre presented to them. Um, so, I mean, who knows where that'll go in the end. And uh, nobody that they spoke to thought that anyone would end up getting fired and nobody has been forced to sign a new contract as of yet. Now, we reported yesterday that uh, Vince reminded everyone that the deadline was October the 2nd, which was yesterday. And so it'll be interesting to see if any more news comes out over the next couple of days uh, about sort of what talent have decided to do. And in that um, conversation with Vince, they were reminded that repeated violations would lead to fines, suspensions, or termination. So the threat of it is there. And I guess if uh, wrestlers aren't convinced that it'll lead to full on terminations, but who knows if it'll lead to fines and things like that. Um, so Mike Johnson of PW Insider has another great rundown of all of the backstage reactions from this. He's basically talking about how talent are frustrated that they were previously in, encouraged to build their brand on social media and now that's being completely taken away from them and absorbed into the wider WWE picture uh, which is a big part of them sort of losing their independence online. Others are frustrated that only a month ago they were told uh, that so long as they are uh, under their real names and things like Cameo and Twitch it wouldn't be an issue but just sort of four weeks later that's kind of not the, no longer the case and they've taken that little bit of hope away from them. Uh, others uh, say that they are losing in income and that they know that they will never make it back within the WWE umbrella. It's how WWE are going to do it. Twitch already takes their 50% and then WWE will take their cut on top of that and then we don't even know what the percentage is that they would then feed down to um, WWE talent but they will only actually get that extra money if it exceeds their downside guarantee in the first place and with a lot of things like live events being cut out and like um, signing appearances and things like that not happening at the minute. It's and the fact that just the WWE cut is going to be a fraction of the amount that they would have gotten direct from Twitch. Then, then they're worried about sort of how this is actually going to impact their money. Some people reported as well that um, to give you an, an idea of how much of an impact Twitch has on their lives. Um, that on a good month, some of them were making up to what their monthly wage from WWE was. So this is, we're talking about a, a good chunk of money for some of the people that were um, big on the streaming. Um, but so far, it seems like the biggest frustration of it all is that they're now going to be forced to stream for WWE in some way, shape or form. So it's just going to become another part of their job, just like going to signings, uh, public appearances, um, showing up on like WWE shows like The Bump and things like that. 
it's just going to become another part of their WWE contract and another thing that they're going to have to do, even if they close their personal contracts and they don't have it absorbed into the WWE system, they're still going to be required to do it for WWE like official streams. Um, the biggest frustration in this is that Twitch was a place where they could have their freedom and be themselves and build an audience on their own, uh, have, and have a direct re audience, a direct relationship, sorry, with the audience and engage with their fans in a very, very direct way. Um, I also, a lot of people did loads of work for charities on these, and they're worried about how that's going to impact that. Um, and yeah, just losing the ability to just relax and stream on their own, engage with their fans. It's more than just what the money was that's bringing in. It was another place where they can be themselves and be proud of what they've built outside of WWE. And now that's all just kind of going to be rammed down into the WWE system and they just feel like they're uh, being punished for becoming successful outside of WWE on their own. And it's just going to become another part of their job. Uh, now we're already seeing a few wrestlers on like Twitter and Cameo and things have changed their names. Like Xavier Woods has changed all his social handles to Austin Creed. Um, Paige, Selena Vega and Dakota Kai have all tweeted out about this, um, talking about just how great Twitch was as a place, um, showing there's obviously a little bit of a worry about what's going to happen with it going forwards. And finally, uh, my notes, <laughs> Andrew Yang has tweeted again about this, saying that he is actually hearing from talent that WWE is forcing performers to sign new contracts that include Twitch streaming. Uh, streaming on Twitch will become a work obligation, and if talent doesn't stream, they will forego earnings, be suspended, or face penalties. Doesn't sound like independent contractors, so he's still very much on the bandwagon of trying to make some sweeping changes within WWE. Um, so yeah, a lot to break down there, but that's just the general backstage reaction to all of this. What do you make of it? <laughs> Oh, you, like you just said, there's an awful lot to break down there. Um, the biggest thing that sticks out to me uh, that just feels like a massive kick in the teeth through, throughout it all, and there's so much, there is so much that's just not serving the actual talent here at all, yeah. obviously. But the biggest thing is the fact that they, they were promoted, they were pushed to make these channels for so long. They were saying, go out, build your own brand. If you become a bigger star elsewhere, you'll bring people into the WWE. You go and do you and you earn a bit of extra money where, hey, when it wasn't impacting, it, it still isn't impacting the way WWE are working as a company. But when yeah. WWE still had the live events and the sign-ins and things like that, it was fine. It was an issue. You go, hey, you want to go and do that? Have a bit of fun and a bit of extra cash. You do your thing. But now suddenly WWE are out of pocket with the live event stuff, they're not out of pocket completely because I, I think it was recently, oh yeah, they had the massive TV deal that they earned loads of money on. So they're not, they're not out of pocket and they've cut loads of people because of the current situation as well. So they've still got money. This is just greed. It's just greed. And they've just cut the legs off the talents here that have worked so damn hard to, to build up these channels. I think I saw Paige put something on Twitter the other day, might've been yesterday, where somebody was saying something like, oh, you wouldn't have had all the fans you got on, on, on Twitch if it wasn't for WWE, which is, you've got some part of a point there, yes, but Paige herself has worked on that channel. She has helped build it into what it is. She's helped keep those subscribers, keep more people coming back for more. You can click onto something once and think, eh, it's not for me and come away, but because Paige has been so compelling and so interesting and just been so relaxed and it's been a place where she can really connect with her fans, she's made it a really big thing and now it's been taken away just because WWE haven't got the live events right now. What, what happens when they get live events back? Are they gonna carry on doing this as well? Is, is this gonna be just another thing they get to put in the pocket, just Scrooge McDuck in? It's, I, I'm so just brassed off by this. And obviously I, I'm not even a talent. I can't imagine how so many of the talents must be feeling right now. But then, like you just said in your notes, that there are people sat there thinking, well, well there's, there's no real chance we're gonna get fired. That People are still quite relaxed about it, which, in itself, is that is that the more experienced people saying, oh, we've seen stuff like this happen in the past, you're just gonna get a wrap in the knuckles, you'll be fine. Or is that just the fact that there's no real clarity? Because it is such an unprecedented thing and people just not worried because they're like, oh, we don't we don't know. We don't, we don't know what's really gonna happen. When somebody does get fired, if they do, I hope to God they don't. But if somebody did get fired because they carried on doing the, the Twitch or the cameo in, would that be setting the president going forward with that suddenly like instill fear into talents it's just it's a ah oh, it's a messy awful situation and i hate it yeah and like you say Paige is an interesting one to bring up because she isn't on screen all the time like she isn't a sort of weekly presence on like raw or smackdown or anything like that obviously she transitioned to more of a presenter role for things like mm -hmm. backstage 
um, but isn't like a weekly person on TV. And so she's used this Twitch platform as, and I mean, she's grown it massively. It's incredibly successful, her channel. Um, she's used it as this other way of like, it's, it's almost like a, a life after WWE kind of thing where like you're looking at the future and looking for hope and things to do beyond the WWE landscape, which obviously isn't going to last forever. Like you can't wrestle forever. There's got to be something that comes on afterwards. And it's like they're taking away a bit of their future from this as well. And it's, um, it's yeah, it's, it's just a crappy situation. But I kind of hope it ends up in like a straw that broke the camel's back kind of situation where this is finally the like position that the talent are going to move forward and get something a little bit better out of these independent contractor statuses that they've got. Obviously, Andrew Yang is saying that if Biden gets in, um, he's going to have it as a like push it um, as a as a policy. So yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens with all of this. Obviously, there's there's definitely going to be more coming out about this over the coming days, especially with the deadline being yesterday. So we'll be finding out more about this, and we will let you know as and when we do. Yes, and. Well, not not to massively veer away from it, but there, there was there was a show on last night. I know if you if you can somehow separate the the awfulness of what's going on in WWE with these uh, third party policies, but SmackDown happened and it it was a pretty good show. It, it's it, it's this is what happens after a pay per view. Obviously, you need to start setting up the the next pay per view and the rest of it. So not an awful lot of cataclysmic event stuff happened, but stuff did happen and we'll talk about it. So it's looking like Roman Reigns and Jey Uso are going to be facing off at Hell in a Cell. It's not, it was a weird one. They, they had a bit of a, a, a face off, a stare down. Uh, Mr. Reigns was saying, I don't want anybody else to call me the tribal chief other than Jay. Jay needs to speak to me about it because he didn't say it when we were in the ring at night. Clash of Champions, I, I do that every single video, but Clash of Champions and yeah, so they squared off and he said something about make it this match was going to have the highest stakes possible, which I thought was a bit of an odd one. I'm, I'm not sure what that means. Is this going to be like an extreme Hell in a Cell match? We don't know. It wasn't officially confirmed that it is going to be a Hell in a Cell match, but it was hinted at all the way through the show. And then Jey Uso beat AJ Styles because AJ Styles came to the ring and he was like, yep, I'm gonna, I'm, I don't think you deserve to be in this uh, Universal Championship position. I'm the phenomenal one. I should be there. And then they had a match and Jay beat him. So, nope, Jay does deserve to be there. And I pretty much think that's the biggest one-on-one -on -one victory of his career so far. So that's pretty big. Yeah. And then after this, we then had Otis completely squashing John Morrison, which shocked the hell out of me. That was just, yeah, but we love Otis. So he, he did his thing. And I think the biggest takeaway of this little segment match was the fact that before it, he had a little picture-in-picture -picture thing. And Otis said that he was going to be representing himself in a court case over his money in the bank contract, which I'm worried about. <laughs> this, this is not this is not what I want from my Otis. Yeah. So that 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 happened. That was that was another big uh, setup for next week. We also had Sheamus destroying Shorty G. He just bro kicked him into oblivion. And then another picture in picture thing was the biggest takeaway from this because Big E challenged Sheamus to a false count anywhere match on next week's SmackDown. So another setup, we just got set up, set up, set up. But then I think the biggest thing that actually happened on the show, like the biggest event thing that happened was Kevin Owens got absolutely eviscerated by The Fiend. He obviously had Alexa Bliss on the Kevin Owens show. Kevin Owens was brought over because the brand invitational thing suddenly got remembered because they were talking about the draft. It's, it's, I don't know, they make up their own rules is what it is. But he was chatting away to Bliss. He said, you've changed. You're not the giggly, laughy, nice girl that you were in NXT when I remember you like back in the performance center. You changed. She was like, I have changed. I've been brainwashed. I've had my brain washed, which was a bit weird. And she started smiling and she was being very intense. And then she went, let me in. And he came up. The fiend came in, put his hand in his mouth. And it was oh, everything red and flashy. And then he shook Alexa Bliss's hand. Well, offered his hand. It wasn't like a big handshake. They, they like looked off into the camera and it looks like they've now officially become an alliance type thing, which yeah. was very exciting. And then we had... Your favourite match ever pretty much happened. Another variation of it, Phil. We had the Lucha House Party and Matt Riddle Again. taking on King Corbin and Cesaro and Nakamura. So that was what it was. The, the Lucha House Party and Riddle beat King Corbin and his gang of merry folk. And then there was like a weird little tease again with the Lucha House Party breaking up because Kalisto kicked Lince Dorado with a face and Matt Riddle was like, bro, 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 chill out, chill out, bro. Chill, 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 chill. And they did, they chilled. And then Carmella was revealed as the mystery woman from the vignette. No, we just nobody saw it figure that one out. <laughs> Honestly, like it Shocker. was just my, my jaw, I had to pick it up a lot. It was her, but now she's looking like a heel because she said she's, she's not our princess anymore. So, yeah, well. 
We'll see what happens. And I, I think she teased in, in the actual promo uh, that she might not officially be going back to SmackDown because of the draft and stuff like that, which interesting i like carmella let's see where she goes from here like i know um we also had sasha banks cutting a bit of a promo on bailey she was setting up that match that's going to happen next week as well and then we also oh, yeah the match the women's championship match I, i'm not going to just skate over that that's pretty huge seismic news that we're finally going to get that match but it's going to be on smackdown for some reason and then the main event of smackdown was Sami Zayn taking on jeff hardy he was defending his intercontinental championship that he won in in my opinion, one of the best ladder matches of the modern era. Fight me. It was awesome. And yeah, he beat he beat Jeff Hardy. He beat him. He took the turnbuckle off midway, I think, bef midway through Jeff Hardy's entrance. And then it was their all match. And then he, he pulled his legs like towards the end of the match. He smacked his head off the turnbuckle. Went down, got in for the victory. And it was a typical Sami Zayn sneaky victory, which I think we're going to see a lot more of going forward. But... Like with you, Phil, there's a lot to break down here. So, yeah, what do you want to talk about from SmackDown? Yeah, well, it's, I guess it's more of just how much WWE are stacking the draft show next week with not only Biggie versus Sheamus, Falls Count Anywhere, bloody Sasha Banks versus Bailey for the SmackDown Women's Championship, Fiend versus Kevin Owens, and Otis going to court against The Miz. I mean, that's a hell of a show right there. Um, but not only have they announced those things for SmackDown next week, they've also announced a bunch of things for Raw next week, which isn't the draft show. The draft Raw is after the SmackDown one. Um, but Drew McIntyre and the Street Profits will be going up against Orton, Rude and Ziggler. And um, Bray Wyatt is going to be on the Kevin Owens show because of this inter-brand whatever. So, yeah, interesting week for WWE coming up next week. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, yeah... I I don't know whether they're trying to tease the Bray Wyatt, Kevin Owens thing going forward. Is this going to turn into a proper program when Kevin Owens gets drafted over to SmackDown or maybe The Fiend goes to Raw? It feels like it's edging on that kind of thing where they, they're just trying to drip feed us, but it should be quite interesting. But one of the big, big, big talking point things that I'm very excited to talk about today is apparently there are a few plans to potentially bring some fans back into the Performance Center. And I'm saying the Performance Center because NXT TakeOver 31 will not apparently be going down in full sale. It'll be going down in the Performance Center. So it's going to be looking a little bit different. But this is a, an update from Fightful, Fightful Select. Uh, they've said that certain talents and trainees that are working in NXT right now have been asked to recommend names of family and friends uh, to bring in for a crowd environment type deal at TakeOver and uh, they've said that they, they've all received emails knowing that they can bring three people with them to TakeOver to be in the crowd so it sounds like it could be a mix of talent, trainees and friends and family from there. Not too sure, that sounds like it's going to be a lot of people to be fair so that's, that's I don't know, I'm getting a bit edgy already thinking about it but the idea of fans being back is really cool so I'm a bit like ugh. Uh, it was also noted that no one under the age of uh, 16 is permitted without a guardian, face masks will be required and social distancing policies will be in place. People attending TakeOver also will uh, be required to submit a rapid Rona test, uh, a temperature check and sign a waiver upon arrival. So yeah, it, it mm, this is the bit that really irks me a little bit because it feels like typical WWE just slapdash. Yeah, okay, test it, but come in. Like it mm, doesn't feel as official and thought out as perhaps it should. Yeah, WWE doesn't have the best track record with things like this, do they? So we'll mm -hmm. have to wait and see what happens. But it seems like dipping their toes back in the water for fans. Um, we've obviously had the news as well that uh, the Amway Center contract for the Thunderdome is running out. So we'll be interested to see what they're doing after that. But Florida is pretty much just the Wild West in terms of the global bastard, isn't it? So it's Mm -hmm. Anything goes over in Florida town, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see where they go with that after this. But speaking of anything going in Florida town, um, WrestleMania 37, it looks like it's no longer going to be in California in Inglewood. Um, they are actually going to be moving it to Tampa, uh, to the Raymond James Stadium, which was obviously the home or the original home of WrestleMania 36. Pirate WrestleMania could be coming back. Um, so WWE, like this, there's a few reports out there about this, but WWE have put a statement saying we have nothing to report and given the current environment, we continue to monitor locations for all of our potential events. But uh, everyone's pretty much reporting that um, they are looking to move it to Tampa. WrestleVotes came out um, just last night saying that um, WWE are in a current battle with LA over who can legally cancel the events. 
they've obviously got contractual obligations with the state of California with um, WrestleMania being in place and WrestleMania being such a like huge thing. But with everything that's happening with the Global Bastard, uh, you're much more likely to be in a situation to have fans in Florida than you are in California. So I think that might be the reason that WWE wants to move it. Um, but obviously there's no word yet on about how many fans they'll allow in the stadium or ticket sales or anything like that. That is all completely up in the air. So we'll have to wait and see where they go with this. Yeah, and to be honest, like you just said, if if this gets us that little bit closer to Pirate WrestleMania, I'm in. Feel sorry for WrestleMania goes Hollywood, but just push it back. Push it back another year. Yeah. Like, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there in the end. The world will recover. We will make it. Um, but speaking of recovering, apparently morale is back up in Monday Night Raw, and this is ever since the move over to the Amway Center, the, the Thunderdome land. And a lot of this, this is again reported by Fightful Select, but a lot of this is down to the fact that it was quite cramped in the performance center. People felt like they, it was getting very cramped and lived in and just everyone's stepping on each other's toes, which is not what you want. There was a lot of programming going down in the performance center at this time. So now, because they've got a bit more space, one performer, uh, one raw talent joked that there are now more places to hide from everyone else, which I know it sounds odd, but you need a bit of space to yourself sometimes if you're getting ready for a big moment, a big yeah. segment, just to get your head in the game. If you've got somebody next to you just, I don't know, eating a sandwich, it's, it's, it can take you out of it. So it, like you said, the, the Amway Center contract expires at the end of October, so it's anyone's guess what happens after that. Morale could drop again if they start touring around the world or they go to outdoor events, uh, outdoor venues, sorry, or we don't know. They could possibly extend the Amway Centre thing, which probably is the wisest thing to do if any of this can be classed as wise at this point. But yeah, that's that's where they stand on Monday Night Raw. Indeed. So let us know in the comments below what you think of all of today's news stories, especially all the backstage talent frustrations and things like that, and WWE's plans for fans going forwards. Um, but if you want, you can follow us on Twitter. You can follow me at Film My Chambers, and you can follow Gareth at gmorgan04 and you can follow all of us at what culture at what culture wwe make sure to subscribe to the channel like the video comment down below like i said uh ups and downs is coming later and we're gonna have a big smackdown review over on the podcast so go check out the what culture wrestling podcast wherever it is that you happen to get podcasts uh but most importantly have yourselves a bloody good day goodbye <laughs>